Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, this morning when I entered the House, the Honorable Minister for Environment was addressing the House. And his speech was polluted with the words honesty. Honesty. We were dishonest when we proposed X, Y, and Z. Let me ask them a simple question. In 2012, we had the ruling from the UN Committee. And in 2012, we were aware, at least all respected politicians and respectable political parties were aware that we had to, if we want to reform the electoral system, we have to do away with the past, the best do the system. Since that ruling in 2012, we are well aware. In fact, we debated in that house in 2014. We amend the Constitution in 2014 just to comply with that ruling or observation of the UN Committee. And yet, the Alliance Le Pip, who present themselves to be honest person, went in their manifesto, noir sur blanc, c'est écrit, une réforme électorale sera adoptée, etc., etc., une dose de, pro de proportionnel sera introduite, le système de best loser system sera maintenu. And you call yourself honest people? What well, down in your heart? Now you all believe that if we want to reform the best the electoral reform, we have to do away with the best of the system. Misleading the people, misleading certain community just to get the vote. And today, Honorable Saminaden, Saminaden is talking about God no promise. God no promise. Are you keeping your promise? Are you maintaining the best of the system? Are you having a system? I will come to you later. You have listened to you. Please listen to me. We have been criticized by whole names this morning. Hypocrite, etc. Now listen. If you have some water, I can give you. He will give you the biscuit. Yes. My question is whether when, a, when the campaign to certain communities, especially in question number two, in question number three, even in question number one, certain parts of question one, telling them that we will maintain the best through the system, mm -hmm. when they know deep inside that this cannot be done. And today, listening to Honorable Somina then, making a speech, we know everybody is watching on the TV, mentioning Communauté Tamil, Communauté Marathi, <laughs> Communauté Telugu, and he was in the committee, ministerial committee. Hmm. Does this law mention anywhere? Be it on the PR, be it on the additional seat, that this community can rest assured that they will be represented? Just making a speech for la gallery. Just making a speech for those who are watching the TV to listen. When we know as a fact, in this document, in this bill we have today. In fact, it goes contrary to the document which was circulated prior to that uh, bill in September 2018. I will come one to one to show how this government, not only they are dishonest, but they do not keep their promise. Madam Speaker, Electoral reform is not the things we can take a la légère. The electoral system which we inherited since independence 50 years ago comprises of two parts. The first part, the post system where we have 20 constituencies and we elect the first three candidates. And the second is what we know 
is known as the best Luther system. The MMM, which was created in 1969, we were not a party to the adoption of the present electoral system. But we recognize that the system that was bequeathed to us has been the bedrock of political and social stability in our country. But we also recognize that there is a need to strengthen this democracy, this electoral system. Although we were not party to it, we went along with it. But at the same time, we were in the forefront to strengthen our democratic foundation and to consolidate national unity. The MMM is, in fact, it's worth noting that in 1982, it was the MMM-led government that amended the Constitution to entrench the holdings of general elections every five years and holdings of by-election. Most importantly, consistent with the struggle against communalism, the MMM-led government in 1982 abolished the holding of census to determine communal appartenance of each and every Mauritian prior to being a candidate in the general election. And this has been recognized by each and every party leader as a pa. If I may quote the ex-Prime Minister in 2014 said, Mr. Speaker, this was a far-sighted decision. It was a great decision to take. It was in the direction that I am going to speak about. We were talking about the amendment to the Constitution, temporary amendment. The best through the system, especially the ruling of the Human Rights Committee on the issue of declaration of one's community in order to be a candidate for the generation, the committee concluded and it is clear that the BLS in its present form is no longer tenable and advised the state of Mauritius to come with effective remedy. We will see whether this bill complies. However, we are all, we are all brutally shocked in 1982 by the result of the election, the 60s, that was the first one. And it demonstrated the inherited unfairness, injustice in the actual first person, the poll system in our electoral system. The Labour Party then with nearly 30% of the popular vote gained no seat in parliament. And a year later, the MMM alone gained 48, 46% of the popular vote with only 19 MPs represented. But we in the MMM, we did not sit down. We started a reflection as how to go forward to ensure a more representative system of parliament democracy. And it was in 1986 the first document coming for a from a political party. The MMM rece released a document entitling, entitling a fair and workable electoral system. 1986, after the two general elections of 82 and 83, before 87 election, whereby, whereby we propose an 80 member parliament consisting of 42 MPs elected according to the first post, the post, that is two per constituency, and 30 MPs for, on a PR basis, for party obtaining more than 10% of the popular vote. But at that, that, that time, we kept the best through the system. Subsequently, we had the 1987, 1991, and 1995 election. In 1991, with 73.3 percent of the vote, the MMM-MSM alliance secured 57 seats. 
and worse was to come. In 1995, the MSM with the RMM, yeah, the RM Alliance, with 20% of the popular vote, had no seat in Parliament. Not even the best loser seat. But with that actual system, the PCD, Portugal Duval, he was not in the Premier League. With less than six percent of the vote, obtained the best loser seat. And the Isbulla party, <laughs> with less than two percent of the vote, obtained one seat. And then, with twenty percent of the vote, no seat from the. MSM or MM Alliance. So, Madam Speaker, this clearly testified the perversity of the first post, the post system. This is why the MSM having been victim, the MM has always been victim of that system. In 2000, when we were together, the MSM and MMM, once in office, in the same year, the SAC Commission was appointed with a specific mandate to make recommendation with regards to representation in Parliament on a proportional basis within the existing electoral system. Already 2000, in 2000, we started to seek theories. The MMM started in 1986. We had the first document. Together with the MSM, in 2000, we had the Commission, Commission SAC. The Commission came forward with a proposal consisting, and I quote, fairness, stability, simplicity, familiarity, and impact on national harmony and social progress. This is what the recommendation of SACS was based on. And the SACS Commission, and the SACS Commission is strongly strongly, I'm in passage of the word strongly, and my friend Colin W. Luke, look at that, he will see that we strongly as well when we went to the select committee, rejected the parallel system in the PO. The SAC commission in 2000, I'll come to the select committee, I'll spend some time on the select committee because the report of that select committee, which was very important and is still more important today, its recommendation was never debated in Parliament. Many people, now that we, have, we are alive, it's good that people know that we had a select committee. There was intelligent proposition came, but unfortunately, we could not go ahead. So, fairness, stability, simplicity, familiarity, and impact on national harmony and social progress. And the commission recommended 62 plus 30 on PR with 10% threshold. And although we did not have the UN committee's finding, ruling, or comments, SAC even went, went, uh, went further on the best through the system. This is what he had to say. He had to say, and I quote, it is the opinion of the commission that the BLSR has outlived its original purpose. And he goes on to say, at the same time, the Commission believes that the symbolical reassurance given by the BLS, this is very important, symbolical reassurance given by the BLS is something which should not be ignored. Symbolical reassurance given by the BLS is something which should not be ignored. And further recommended that, amongst others, subsuming the BLS into the new constitutional arrangement while divesting its unacceptable features. So have a system which will not ignore the symbolical reassurance given by the BLS and at the same time have it incorporated, subsuming in the new electoral 
the form that we are having. And government of that day, MMM, MSM government, took the recommendation very seriously. And on the 23rd of April 2002, Parliament appointed a select committee. On the following terms of reference, you okay, got to look at the following terms of reference because this is to show the importance we attach to such commission. And let me quote the terms of reference. And it's good to note that today we have at least three members in this house, of the, in this house who sat on the com uh, committee. Honorable Condemned Avenue was the chairperson. I was a member and Honorable uh, Mrs. Dukan Nachuban was also on that committee. Mm -hmm. Our term of reference, the term of reference of the committee was clear. A, to examine further to the Commission's report and the recommendation in the matter of introducing of the introduction of a measure of proportional representation in our electoral system to make recommendations without prejudice to the existing best the system regarding the modalities for the implementation of the Commission's recommendation that the National Assembly should be composed of 62 MPs as at present and of a further 30 members chosen proportionally from, proportionately from parties having obtained more than 10% of the total number of votes cast as a general election and to propose appropriate legislation. So, in 2002, when we appointed that select committee, which makes its recommendation, which published a report, I think, in 2004, 2004, February 2004, we have already worked a long way, but without touching the VLS. We have work a long way to introduce. And it's good to note that in that report, there was also a draft, a draft amendment, a draft bill for, the, for amending the Constitution. But unfortunately, the Honorable Deputy Prime Minister did inform us yesterday that for well, one reason or other we could not go ahead. I don't know, but there was no agreement, especially from the MSM, as far as I can recall, to implement the recommendation of the Select Committee report. 2004, it was here. The bill was already drafted. The, bill, the amendment bill was in that report. But we, although we had the majority, MSM, MMM, but there was some reluctance on the other partners to go ahead. So, what does that report say? in detail. It's good. Let me quote some paragraph. Like I said, this, this report, unfortunately, it's laid up in the table. It goes in the drawer. Nobody read it. Most of those who are not interested in electoral reform will not read it. But it's good that I read certain paragraph from the report because, like I say, what was proposed is, is still relevant today. Section 1, when we talk about stability and fairness. Stability and fairness. There has been many talk, especially by the Honorable Minister Mentor, the Honorable Prime Minister, stability, stability, stability. But our report, that report, took into consideration stability and fairness. Paragraph 45. All political parties has, have been victims of the present system. Everybody finds in this system an element of unfairness in that it outs from the system a political party which rallies a substantial portion of the electorate. The huge disproportionality between votes polled and seats received is such that every Mauritian in one stage of his electoral life can say that at least once he has felt frustration with the results of the general election. The chance that we have is that today we need for reform is felt also at government level. No reasonable position can be heard to say that a political party ought to be expelled from political life when a substantial portion of the electorate 
had voted for them. Fairness, stability. Paragraph 49. The problem with our first post, the post system, is that it breeds with itself an in inherent perversity. Breeds within himself an inherent perversity. Are we correcting that today? In fact, with our additional seed, we will reintroduce that inherent perversity, which, if left unchecked, may one day lead us to severe civil. <coughs> Commotion. And it is in order to read the system with its inherent perversity that the political class now wants to find a fine, a fairer way of ensuring democratic representation through a fair electoral reform. Paragraph 63. We, re we make reference to the worried, constant worried, of the Honorable Minister Mento about Rodrig. Always referring to Rodrig when we talk about P.O. in Mauritius. And this is what the report has to say under the chairmanship of the Deputy Prime Minister. <clears throat> but the huge difference between Rodrig and Mauritius is the size of the electorate and the size of the assembly. One need not be a great mathematician to understand that the relative percentage applied to a larger figure yield a greater margin in his absolute result. I hope the Honorable Mentor has read this paragraph. In Rodrigue, the OPR got 55% of the votes and the EMEA 44%. But the OPR won two thirds of the seats. When applied to an assembly of 62, the margin will be greater and would ensure stability while guaranteeing fairness to the losing party. We also have that issue. What was proposed in the select committee addressed the issue of Rodrigue? The SACS recommendation is track a balance between the need for stability and the need for fairness. Germany strikes the balance right in the middle with 50% of the seats both, of both modes. New Zealand opted for 55-45%, while Wales it is 67% and 33% in favour of Forbes Oliver. The Sachs recommendations were only 30 out of a maximum of 100 seats, including the best weather system, would dominate from a party list and sure that the of country poll will not be facilitated. Paragraph 66. The issue, therefore, is not to install corrective measures as in the best loser system, where losers win on the sole basis of the community. The issue is designed is to design a system which respects the will of the electors who make a democratic choice for the party they wish to be in power. And this system requires a compromise to be found between fairness and stability by applying a compensatory formula based on actual votes poll. This is probably where the Sachs Commission has paved the way for an advancement of democracy in Mauritius. Let it be said with respect that the Sachs Commission was not acting on a frolic of its own and has made of Mauritius an experimental station in democracy. Sachs based himself on proven experience in other countries. So the Sachs Commission recommended and the Select Committee recommended that. And today we are having proposal by this government which goes both, which goes both against the SAC committee recommendation and the recommendation of the select committee of the MSM MMM government. Then in 2011, in 2012, sorry, we came the views of the Human Rights Committee under Article 5 
of the optional protocol to the International Covenant of Civil and Political Rights. So the issue changed completely down. We were always thinking about the 60 elected force for the post. Now, reflection have to move towards seeing how we do away with, with the declaration of one's community before standing as a candidate for the general election. And indirectly or directly, we are doing, we have to do away with the best rule system because the sole purpose of declaring one's community is to participate in, uh, for the best rule system. Although it is to be noted because there is a, a perception that the resistance alternative and their case against the best rule system, no, they did not have their case against the best rule system, they had their case again, they did not want to declare the community. So when the, when the committee came with that conclusion that we should do away with the declaration of committee, so we have to, do, to, have to look for a system which will do away with the best rule system. Hence, was the white paper of 2014 entitled Modernizing the Electoral System. The main objective was to introduce a dose of PR and to do away with the best the system, but to have same, I repeat, to have same subsumed into the proposed electoral reform. A good electoral system for a plural society where all components of our rainbow nation must secure adequate parliamentary representation. So this is where we were in 2014. There was that white paper. Then came the proposal of the Labour Party and MMM Alliance in 2014. Had the Honourable, the Honourable Mr. Environment this morning whilst addressing the House, he seems not to, to be confused where the MMM was, what we, have, what we wanted exactly, but had he done his homework properly, had he done his homework properly, he would have done. Yeah. We, the MMM, wanted 20. Or the PR, on the, on, the, on the proportional PR, eight instead of six on the party list, and seven percent instead of ten percent qualify, to qualify to participate in the PR. This is the stand of the MMM. Sorry? And on, on the demand, we started with ten percent as well. Then there was consultation with other parties. We came to 75%, 7.5%. However, we have, when you're in alliance, you have to make concession from 40, 20, it becomes 14, and from, from 8, it becomes 6. But there it was clearly stated that it was clearly stated that the best through the system will be subsumed in the electoral system. It was clearly stated that we have to ensure representation of each and every community of our nation, which is not in our case, in, in, in the case of the government. Now, we're following that, let, let's come to the bill. We believe in the case to introduce a PR system to do away with the inherent injustice contained therein, perversity as mentioned in the select committee report, but most importantly, whilst doing away with the BLS, to keep that symbolic reassurance. Then this should not be overlooked. Now, amending a constitution, especially when a government has a majority, assuming that 
Thanks God, il est avec moi, tu as fait quoi de? Mais tu amènes notre constitution avec le regard au système électoral. C'est fondamental. This is going to the root of our democracy. And this is why the maker, the father of our constitution, made it clear. Section 41, free of our constitution. It is in our constitution. It says clearly that every proposed bill and every proposed regulation or other instrument having the force of law relating to the elector, uh, registration of electors for the election of members of the assembly or to the election of sub, such members shall be referred to the electoral supervisory commission and to the, and the electoral commission at such time and shall give them sufficient opportunity to make comments thereon before the bill is introduced in the assembly. This is not taking an advice from X, Y, and Z. This is a duty on government to refer the matter to a constitutional, constitutional institution, the Electoral Service Commission, the Supervisory Commission, and for them to give a report. This is a protection to ensure that there is no abuse from the part in power, especially if he has 45% 45 of the vote, to abuse his position to amend the electoral system. And if you have nothing to hide, why don't you run the public so as to give confidence to the nation? So that the people can trust you, can believe in your sincerity if you have any. Have this document published. Have it on the table of the assembly. Let the public at large know what is the opinion of the Electoral Supervisory Commission on such an important amendment. What is wrong? And the way the Honorable Prime Minister dismissed the Electoral Supervisory Commission, although at least it was a, a member of the cuisine. Sorry, I had to do the kitchen again. Huh? He has given a report. This is a constitutional institution. And it is a duty on the, on the government before coming to such bill to seek their opinion, their advice. And why don't you want to guide all of us members of this assembly with the advice? Why can't we benefit from the advice of the Electoral Supervisory Commission? This would have been true democracy. And this would have proved that you sincerely want to go ahead with a reform which we have doubt with about your sincerity d'aller de l'avant with the reform. So why not render public that document? It's not a simple advice. It's a simple advice for the, from the professional, institutional person. And it's not even a legal advice. In fact, in the UK, for legal advice, the government has been in minority has been uh, held into contempt recently, two days ago, for not uh, giving a legal, uh, the proper legal advice to the House. And here we are not talking about legal advice, we're talking about an opinion of the Electoral Supervisory Commission on that important reform which you think you're, you're bringing, which we don't feel is serious. Now, with the uh, way the Best lose the PR is being selected, the percentage. You are proposing the parallel reform. And look what the Commission and SAC has to say on the parallel reform. In fact, the committee agreed with the opinion of, the, of, of uh, SACS and we rejected the parallel reform because the parallel reform is trans make the liquor between the winning and the losing party even wider. That's why we rejected it. It was rejected by Sachs. It was rejected by the Commission Select Committee under the chairmanship of Honorable VPM. 
And today we, you are introducing that system again? So, Honorable Minister of Environment, you say we are very close. It's just a question of numbers, 14 to 20, you are proposing 12, you are proposing 14, or second like that. There are fundamental differences between what you are proposing and our stand. Difference of principle. Fundamental difference. Not do scatos, on est à côté, on est prêt, on est ici, on est là-bas. Non. Il y a des différences fondamentales between what you are proposing. You are proposing a system that will be encourage l'écart between the winning and the losing party and the, with the parallel system. We are saying no. Let's have system C as was proposed by the SAC committee and the select committee. Coming now to the six or ten additional seats. This is even more serious. What does government want to do with these six to ten additional seats? Honorable Somina didn't tell us he was in that ministerial committee. He just mentioned, I repeat it again, it's good that I repeat it again, Tamul Marathi Telegwen Snoboricha. That now they will secure. Where is it written in that bill? Where is it written in that bill that you will ensure that each and every component of the community, of the nation, sorry, each and every component of the nation, as mentioned by Honorable Somina, then is in that bill. Where is it mentioned? Yes, we have a statute book, we have, we recognize. Committee will have speak, English speaking union, French speaking union, Tamil speaking union, Telugu speaking union, Marathi speaking union, Creole speaking union, Urdu speaking union, Arabic speaking union. But then in that, in that bill, it is mentioned any other community. And what is worse, Madam Speaker, when the government released a document on the 20th September 2018, entitling proposed amendment to the electoral system. What was the objective? Paragraph two. To provide a more equitable representation of parties in the National Assembly while ensuring stability and governability. To do away with the mandatory declaration of community. To ensure, look at objective three, to ensure that the majority arising of the first part of the post system remains the same after the allocation of pure and additional best loser. Of course, but what this is the inherent problem with the first part of the post system. It does not represent the wish of the people. It does not reflect the wish of the electorate. With 20% of the vote, you get zero. With 30% of the vote, a political party gets zero seat. With 2% of the vote, they get one seat. This is a problem with the system. And you want to restore it. And you say, of course. But of taking that objective, just for the eyes, for the eyes only, for, for the tongue only, allocation of additional seats, paragraph sign. This is what he said in that document. One, to establish the majority obtained by the winning party or party alliance over other eligible parties or party alliance by ensuring the balance between stability and fairness, restoring. And when he talks about scrapping the best through the system, it says this system, that the additional seat system, would also allow leaders of parties or party alliance to ensure adequate representation of our reiboration in the National Assembly. This is in the proposed document. Where is it in the bill? Where does it, is it written in the bill that Section 8 deals with mode of allocation of additional seats. 
Section 812 finished by saying has of third allocation of PRCs, hence increase or decrease the electoral balance shall in order to restore mathematically that difference allocated in accordance with the paragraph 6 additional seats amongst those parties. Where does it say in the law, in the bill, that these additional seats will also allow leaders of party or party alliance to ensure adequate representation of our rainbow nation in the National Assembly? Well, mislead the people again, send it if you may tell them, okay, we are going to have an amendment, we are going to ensure proportional, uh, ensure that each and every community is represented in Parliament, but when we come with the law, this is not in the law. And you want people to trust you? You people to give you a blank check to choose between six and ten people of your choice? Which members of the public has rejected? The electorate has rejected. You choose. You decide who you want to be in Parliament who you don't want to be in parliament, which community has to be in parliament, which community has not, doesn't have to be in parliament. And this is, Miss Honorable Minister Environment, this is another fundamental difference we have with this bill between the MMM and the bill presented by this government. It's not only a question of numbers, there are fundamental inherent differences between what the government is proposing because it does not cure the ill of our system. Madam Speaker, there have been a tendency by those in power on the other side trying to tell us that, oh, if you don't read the bill, etc., the woman will be upset. You are against women. You are not, you don't want women to be in, in parliament, etc. In fact, if there is Somebody, say party in this house, it is the government who does not want. By linking, linking gender representation with electoral reform, by linking gender representation the bill, you are showing clearly that your interest is not in gender representation. You should have come forward with a bill and you know that had you come forward with a different bill, there would be Unanimity unanim unanim in this house for gender representation. Why do you link it? Santas? Why do you link it with that bill? And let me say, Madam Speaker, we in the MMM, we don't have any lesson to learn from any political parties when it comes to women. Since our creation, we have, we have fought for the emancipation de la femme. 1982, we had a minister for la femme. And the first duty was to look in each and every law of our country to do away with elimination against women. In political parties, we are the first woman Lord Mayor. We are the first woman mayor in QP. We increased uh, women participation in politics. First human council in Grand Rivière in, in the South. Hmm? Honorable Danny Pierre. Yeah, Black, Black River. These are all MMM. And the first opportunity we had in 2011, November 2011, when we were amending the Local Government Act to ensure that there was gender representation, at least one candidate of opposite sex in each and every ward, the then leader of the opposition, Honorable Paul Béranger, came forward with an amendment. It was nearly one o'clock in the morning, I remember that. We came forward with an amendment to say we are amending the law, let's amend the law for general election as well. Let's have one candidate per constituency. But then, of course, it was rejected. But we in the MMM, we did not wait for the law to come. We have already adopted the constitution. In our constitution, it is written that we will make sure by the year 2030 we'll have parity among the candidates. And we are working to have at least one third candidate for the next general election. So we are, not waiting, we are not waiting for the law, we are putting it in practice. Now coming with the transfees, oh, transfees, you are not serious again. 
You are not credible, let's put it. You are not a credible government to come with a law of trust fees. In your cabinet, you have trust fees people. Among your PPS, you have trust fees people. I don't want to, uh, to hurt the chair. I won't, I won't mention the chair. Trust fees everywhere, so. Your port parole on Saturday is a trust fees. So, uh, do you feel you're credible when you come to trust fees? And why this, 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 why this difference between those who are elected and those who are not elected? Yeah? Why this difference? I don't know. Anyway, it is not easy to have a good transfers, law and transfers, but had you come with a proper independent law, even with this one which is not perfect, we would have voted it. What is the difference between elected? I, I, I see Honorable Shurifan look at me. Let, let, let's take one example, two examples in this house now today. We have three candidates who stood on the MMM Labour Party Alliance. Three of them have left our alliance has gone on the other side. Two of them have been elected. One of them have been a best loser. Best loser. Let's assume that that one, the best loser one, was on the party. So you have lapis after the election. All three have campaigned against your manifesto. All three have campaigned against what you have presented to the electorate. Why is it when the free move from here and go there, one has to go out, you can sit in the house? What is the logic? Honorable Sugifan will be out, but the other two, will rem one will remain in the deputy speaker chair, and one will continue to address the nation on every Saturday on behalf of the government. What is the logic? So here again, we would have voted it if it was in a different setup. And avant, peut-être, oui, but it is not perfect. But we would not have, we, it's not perfect, and it's not serious what you are Anyway, your credibility at least does not allow you to come with a perfect, perfect anti-defection law. So, Madam Speaker, I'm informed that I don't want to say everything. I know that my friend Adila Miyamima, Honorable Yemiya, and Honorable Ezra Rezautim, we addressed the House on this issue of TEMI. And uh, for today, I have done. Thank you. Wow, yeah.